The Bengals defense got a boost on Thursday night when they took Clemson defensive end Miles Murphy with the 28th overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft. Let's discuss the pick, what it means for the future of the Bengals defense, and other draft reactions from day one of the NFL draft. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com here at Paycor Stadium early Friday morning where the newest member of the Bengals just got off of a conference call with us. He said he was at a party, by the way. He was at a draft party, obviously celebrating being a first-round pick in the NFL. But Miles Murphy, there was around 150 to 175 people at this party, and he took some time to, to chat with us. And uh, first thing that he said was that he was ready to play football and that he couldn't wait to get on the field. And so uh, if that's any indication, he certainly fits the bill of what Luana Rumo and Zach Taylor were looking for. But what the Bengals got in Miles Murphy is a 21-year-old pass rusher that has certainly flashed throughout his time at Clemson. And he spent three seasons at Clemson. And so the age checks that box. Size certainly checks that box in production. 17 and a half sacks, 139 tackles, has certainly been that type of guy for Clemson. In just talking to people around the building, they think he has more there. I asked Zach Taylor about that, about age and production and all of those things. And they, they think that he has some untapped potential in his game. I know Mike Santagata posted a few things. that's like, yeah, this guy could end up being Bengal Sands, for those wondering. Could be a 10- 10 sack type of guy, 10 sack type of player down the line. And Lou Anarumo talking about how he's going to be an instant impact player and jump into the rotation behind Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson. And look, I knew for a fact that the Bengals wanted to to bolster their pass rush in this draft. And there was a lot of speculation about who, and we did talk about Miles Murphy some, but I don't think the Bengals expected him to be there. And you looked at Mox, and it was about 50-50. He visited them earlier this this month. And it was one of those things where it's like, all right, will he be there, will he not? And he was. And it was the quickest pick of the first round. I don't know if you, you noticed. The pick, uh, the, the Bengals went on the clock, and about a minute in, the pick was in, and it was time to go. And I kid you not, I had the story written for Miles Murphy and a few of the other players. And within five minutes – of posting that story and walking down the hall right here into this room. Zach Taylor and Lou Anarumo sat down, and they were ready to discuss their pick. So clearly there wasn't much debate. There wasn't much discussion. They had zeroed in on Miles Murphy, and they were able to get him. And I look, I like it for a bunch of reasons. I don't love it. I like it. I like it because I, I do think the pass rush needed some juice. And if you're, get it, you're telling me this guy who's 21 years old, who tested like an elite athlete, by the way, you know those relative athletic scores, and I've referred to them here uh, on different shows and stuff here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, certainly different videos, ras.football, at MathBomb on Twitter if you're on Twitter. But he an, analyzes all of these different pre-draft testing, you know, 40-yard dash, three-cone drill, height, weight, arm length, hand size, all of these things. He tested, Miles Murphy did, in the 97th percentile among defensive ends dating back to 1987. Speaking of defensive ends, this is the first time the Bengals drafted a defensive lineman since Justin Smith. Now, some count David Pollock. Okay, still, David Pollock was way back in 2005. So it's been a long, long time since the Bengals have done this. And he fits. He fits exactly what they look for, like I said, size, profile, production at a young age. And so we will see. We will see what he can do. But I, I know there are some people that are going to say, well, this was not a plug-and-play starter. This is not a guy. I, I don't really know how many plug-and-play starters they could have taken. Like Nolan Smith was on the board. He's not starting for them. And the size, I didn't really think they would take him, even though I did have an article written for it. Got to be in the moment. You got to be prepared. Dalton Kincaid didn't make it there. I think Dalton Kincaid would have made it interesting if he had fallen to 28. He didn't make it there. And so Michael Mayer, I, I tried to tell you, and now I, I feel comfortable saying it, the Bengals probably weren't in on Michael Mayer round one. I don't think there was really a scenario where that was happening. 
Darnell Washington, there really wasn't a scenario where that was happening. So I don't think tight end was really in play at 28. Joey Porter Jr. is interesting. I tried to kind of preface. I, I thought there was a shot that he would fall. And would it be fall into the Bengals' lap, lap or fall past the Bengals? I wasn't sure about that, but obviously he's fallen into round two as well. Emmanuel Forbes, uh, a target that I was certainly in on, well, not so much now, right? He goes off the board at 16, and uh, I think he would have been the pick if he was there. And then the other one, the other surprise, what would have been, man, and I, you know, Jameer Gibbs, 12 to the Lions, that's like the shock of the draft to this point. I thought he would go round one. I thought maybe he would go to the Giants at 25 before they traded or one of those teams in the mid-20s. Maybe the Cowboys won him, right? I mean, whew didn't even make it there and so it it makes this easier for me I mean my guys were Emmanuel Forbes Jameer Gibbs Dalton Kincaid well all three were gone so I can't blame the Bengals I can't blame the Bengals for taking a top uh, pass rusher that they had on their board no I I get it it makes sense will he be good we'll see but I, I, th- I think it makes sense. And it's someone we had mentioned and we've mentioned during the pre-draft process Joe Goodberry and I talked about him on our defensive line preview but we didn't focus on him a ton because it was kind of like Lucas Van Ness. He could have went 15th, and he didn't. He went 28th, and the Bengals are really, really excited about it. So overall, if I had to give it a, a grade, you know, B, B plus, I think some of the early grades I've seen, and it's really early. It's not even 1245 yet in the morning on Friday. I've seen some A's. I would give it a B, B plus. It's, it's a, a really solid grade. I'm not over the moon about it. But it makes sense. I understand it. It certainly gives the Bengals more depth at a position not only of need, but a position that just needed more juice. They need more guys that can get after opposing quarterbacks. Look at all the quarterbacks they're going up against in the AFC. You need some juice. And I think that Miles Murphy is someone that at least they think is going to be able to bring that right away. And so we'll see if he can do that. But Look, it's an exciting time. The Bengals get their edge rusher. They snap the defensive lineman streak in the first round of the draft, first time since 2001. What's next? Well, we'll have a video breaking all of that down, whether you're talking about tight ends, running backs. What a shock. I Still, two running backs in the top 12. It's a big shock of the night. Houston with the second and third picks. That was a big surprise as well. I know people surprised about what the Eagles did. That defensive front, by the way. Speaking of defensive fronts, that defensive front continues to add pieces and pieces. Nolan Smith and and obviously Carter earlier in the the draft. So regardless, we have you covered. And by the way, real quick before I go, I wanted to thank each and every one of you that uh, shouted me out for, for Enter the Jungle. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really, really exciting. And um, yeah, so everyone that saw the, the book announcement, CincinnatiBengalsBook.com. Also, they're back. Rivertown Inquiry is back. They have two locations now. So you got to check out Rivertown Inquiry. Go to RivertownInquiry.com. Check out all of their different gear that they have. And whether you want to go to their downtown location, oh, yeah, they're downtown now, or you want to check out their Hyde Park location in Oakley, 10 minutes from downtown, either one, check them out. You're talking about local gear, merchandise, quality T-shirts, quality apparel that lasts for a long, long time. Go to RivertownInquiry.com, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to keep them in our lives for quite some time. So for Andrew Fox Miller, our channel coordinator, who stayed up late to, to edit this video, I'm James Rapine. We will be back early on Friday morning. So if you're watching this and it's Friday at 10 a.m., well, keep watching because we have a round two, round three, a day two preview of the NFL draft that is going to come out and uh, is probably already out if you're watching this at around 10 a.m. So for Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine signing off for now where the Bengals bolster their pass rush with Miles Murphy in the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft.